Now we're going to jump into um, the nitty gritty of TEFL and TESOL contracts, teaching contracts, what to watch out for before signing. So I'm going to go through a lot of important things um, that you need to watch out for. And I'm going to show you real contract examples and how um, the stuff is written in the contract and how you can find it and what to watch out for with examples. I think that's going to make the most sense um, and is the most useful. And like I said, at the end, I'm going to have a whole checklist of all of the things that I talked about that you can save or, you know, screenshot. Or I think I'm also going to share it in the comments later as like a PDF. Um, so you can just print that out or save that for you um, for when you need it, when you are going to sign a contract. All right. Um, maybe the first thing that I want to talk about before. Um, yeah, just a disclaimer. Uh, obviously, these are contracts not from ITTT that I'm going to show you the examples. They're just uh, samples that I found online. Um, and also, just never um, accept a job without a contract, right? I think that goes without saying. So even if you're already in the country um, or no matter where you are, no matter where you go, never um, just start a job without signing a contract. That's just a very bad idea. Uh, it's also illegal. So um, you can get into trouble. In the worst case, you could get deported from the country. Um, there's fines. There's all these other things. So And also for you personally, because you need to have a binding contract as proof, um, you know, that states uh, your salary, working hours, and all those things so that your employer can take advantage of you. So never accept a job without a contract. Hello, Supapong. Hi, <laughs> thanks for joining. Gets you from Thailand? Awesome. All right, so the first one <clears throat> that we're going to talk about today is the contract written in English and easy to understand. So that's the first thing that you need to make sure of. And here's an example. And it might be a little small depending on if you're watching this full screen or how you're watching this. But basically, this is a contract um, for a school in China. So you can see there's Chinese on it, but there's also English. So that's the first thing. If they give you a contract that's only in Chinese or only in their language, um, that's a bad thing, right? Because you can't read it. So don't sign a contract if it's not in English and you don't understand it, right? So that's the very first thing. And then also very important, you know, do the translations of both languages make sense? Do they match? Um, is it the same content, right? Um, because a lot of times, for example, if you sign a contract like this one for China, for example, it's Chinese and then English. So if there's any issue, only pretty much the Chinese version would count um, because it's China and likely people don't really speak English there. Um, and like from a legal standpoint, the Chinese text is what's valid. And so that's going to count if you have any legal issues. So you need to make sure that the Chinese version or the, the native language version also matches the English version, right? And so how can you do that if you don't speak Chinese or if you don't speak Korean or whatever? Um, if you look for the job through a recruiter, you can ask your recruiter to have a look over the contract and make sure that it's good. Um, you can also, if you know somebody, obviously, who can speak the language, you could ask a friend, family member to have a look over it. Um, you could also, in the most simplest and easiest case, you could just, uh, you know, take a picture of it and like Google translate it and just make sure it's, you know, the same. Um, or you could always pay somebody to have a look at it, you know, translate it and make sure. But um, those are just some ideas how you can do that. So, yeah, I think that's about it for the first point. Thinking, I feel like I forgot something. <laughs> um, let me just think about it for a second. Mm. Yeah, I think that's it, though. So... Just to remember, if they only give you a contract and it's not in English at all, there's no English, do not sign it. Um, and just read through, always read through the whole contract um, in general, right? Before signing anything. Um, but that's the, the first thing that you want to make sure. Look at the contract. Is it in English? 
or is it only in the native language of the country? And do the translations make sense, right? So try and verify. Oh, one other way you could do that is by like going in either a Facebook group. There's a lot of Facebook groups for like EFL teachers in China, EFL teachers in Korea and whatnot. And you could upload or you can find someone there to maybe have a look at the contract or you can upload your contract. Obviously you would black out any sensitive information like the school name, your own name and like personal information, black that out, but you could upload that and you know ask people about advice and if they think this is a legit contract so that's another thing good thanks so much for watching we are ittt the leading provider for tefl and tesol training courses if you like this video please subscribe by clicking the button down here and click on any of the videos here on the left for more interesting teaching tips for getting certified to teach English abroad and online.